Minecraft speedrunners use all types of external programs to help optimize every second of their speedrun. In this video, I'm going to be talking about all the programs that speedrunners use when speedrunning. The first program is what I like to call the all-in-one program for Minecraft speedrunning, Jingle. Jingle allows you to do all types of things like ThinBT and iZoom, but also has many other useful tools such as mass deleting your worlds and integrating with OBS. Today, Jingle is a necessity for Minecraft speedrunning. Not only does it optimize your time during the run, but also just has a lot of quality of life features to manage your runs. Jingle also works with Pacemen, which notifies people if any runner is in good pace. This is why you'll see streams get extremely active near the end of the run, because they most likely came from Pacemen. Jingle is constantly being updated and people are making plugins for it. For example, I use Jingle to show my Ninja Brain bot in a much more aesthetic way when I stream. This is all possible thanks to Jingle and the person who made the plugin. Speaking of Ninja Brain bot, that is the second program in this list. Unless you're Cory Ray or you can do calculus and triangulation in your head, you most likely need Ninja Brain to speedrun Minecraft. And yes, what you're looking at right now is really the mathematics behind Ninja Brain Bot. For those unfamiliar, Ninja Brain uses angles that the Eye of Ender goes to predict the location of the stronghold. As the development of Ninja Brain continued, we can pretty much be certain to hit the stronghold every time. Ninja Brain Bot today has way too many features that would take me ages to go over, but here are the important ones. Bold Eye allows Ninja Brain to have a super precise measurement of your eye, allowing Ninja Brain to have a chance of knowing the location of the stronghold with only one eye. Pixel Perfect allows Ninja Brain to have the lowest amount of error possible. Basically, you want to line up your crosshair with where the color of the left side of the eye changes. Next up is Prism Launcher. Prism Launcher is a way to organize different instances of Minecraft, where what you do on one instance won't affect the other instances. This is particularly useful for those who play different Minecraft speedrunning categories and want to ensure that they're using the correct mods for each category. Prism Launcher also has many useful tools such as CurseFord and Modrim support, allowing you to install whatever mod you want straight from the launcher. Next is AutoHockey. This program isn't made only for Minecraft, but definitely has a lot of users in the Minecraft speedrunning community. AutoHockey allows you to make macros and execute them with just a single keybind. The most common use for AutoHockey today is to rebind keys such as F3 to another key that makes it easier to press. I also use AutoHockey to rebind my backspace to something closer to take advantage of a tool called Backspace Crafting, which I talk about in this video. One character wall. I, the thing I like about these one characters is that I do backspace crafting, so I could just press backspace once and then just type in the next thing that I want. While we're in the topic of search crafting, search crafting wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for Microsoft Keyboard Layout Creator. As you can tell by its name, you can use this to make custom keyboard layouts, which is extremely useful for search crafting. For example, here is a picture of my keyboard layout for search crafting in Yoruba. Okay, that concludes today's video. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe as I'm trying my hardest to help others to learn more about micro speedrunning. Anyway, I will see you next time.